Alright guys, so welcome to the recording of the debrief. So in the debrief, what we're going to be talking about is some of the mistakes that I made. So, to, to give you an example, we're going to be talking about at the beginning, there wasn't proper uh, climb speed that wasn't used. I didn't have faster reactions to my altitudes, um, and a whole bunch of other things. I'm also going to debrief all the charts that I use. They're all the FAA approved charts. I'm not running the custom Jeppesen for this because I wanted uh, to be able to uh, show you guys something and uh, have it be easier to understand and easy for you guys to take a look at it post. So we're going to be talking about um, the charts, how well I did while I did the approaches, what happened. Um, I will probably try to include some clips. I'll, I'll see about that because the issue now is then I have to go back and find that exact moment where that note was taken, splice it, and bring it back in. Um, I'll try not to make it just a generic, oh look, this was from the episode you hopefully watched. Here it is again. And I'm talking about nothing that's happening during this video. So um, that's the thing I want to avoid. So if I'm going to include an, a visual part to this audio bit uh, of me flying, I'm definitely going to include the charts and all that stuff, then, um, then I need to do some splicing and some editing. So right now this is just me. I've written down all of, all of, the, all of the issues, and I'm just kind of discussing them with you guys right now. So um, I'll, I'll keep these notes. I'm going to keep the talking going here. I'm going to splice in some video where I can, assuming it's simple enough and relevant. And I'm also going to debrief most of the charts. So let me get to doing that one here. Alrighty, so let's head right into a couple of the errors. So obviously during the start of it, I kind of rushed the pre-flight. Um, I need to be aware of uh, how bad the weather conditions are going to be, so I should have spent a little bit more time on the pre-flight. Um, also, I could have practiced some of the CTAF stuff, but because Pilot Edge was closed, I really didn't see the personal benefit of me doing it. And I need to be aware of the hold short lines, as you guys saw in that video, in the sped up video clip. I'm way past that hold short line at uh, Catalina or Avalon, which is kind of a problem. They're in different places by the sim, but uh, I should have been aware of that. So, um, I should have checked that the engine um, could not have died when I did a, few, or would not die when I did a tank switch, uh, which is good. It's a good thing that I tested that, but I forgot the fuel pump for safety, um, just to make sure that everything was good to go there. So, on the takeoff, in my opinion, it was a good call to add carb heat after rotation, so that way I'd have a short uh, takeoff roll. I probably should have had it pulled out during taxi and tried to run the engine as hot as possible. Uh, just my idea. So one thing that I need to improve after the takeoff is uh, holding the heading until I'm at 2,300 because I kind of deviated a little bit uh, to the left, as hopefully you guys should see in this sped up clip above. And I also need to improve turning and climbing at the same time. I'm good with turning and I'm good with climbing. Just combining the two together ends up in a complete disaster of uh, potential sinkage, as you guys saw with that negative 2,000 foot per minute in the opening set. Um, since this is the first time you're running this kind of debrief, there are going to be some mistakes. I'm going to try and uh, just generally cover some of the errors that I saw. So I need to have faster reactions and smaller coordination, my, or smaller control inputs. I need to be a little bit more coordinated. If you watch throughout each video series, you'll see that the ball and oil is not always where it should be. Um, and I could trim out the rudder pedals a little bit better. I just need to make sure my controls are set properly. And I need to keep leaning in mind throughout. And pretty much I need to be aware of my altitudes and the cloud types and my power settings. I need to make sure that I'm not potentially going to overspeed the prop. So those are some things that I needed to improve on on the first one. My approach was pretty stable. Um, I was actually really happy with the first approach. So let's actually start talking about some of the... Um, procedures that I did and some of the issues with that. So uh, I'll need to debrief the procedures for you guys and then talk about the errors with them. So this should be an interesting segment. All right, so let's talk about some of the things that we have here. So um, on the left, you guys have the Jack Northrop Field Hawthorne Municipal Airport um, detail page on Sky Vector. You can see that they give us information as to when they first opened, whether they have an operational um, status control tower, 
uh, the seg circle beacon and the uh, general lighting for it and whether the wind indicator is lighted and we also have remarks about the lighting schedule here we have all the frequencies uh, or frequencies that we need including VORs and NDBs below we also have some metrics about the runway as far as obstacles, glide slope indicators, glide slope path uh, for precision, non-precision, instrument approaches, all this other stuff. Now we took out from Avalon, so before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at our departure procedure out of Avalon. So this is the takeoff minimums obstacle departure procedures, or ODP, um, for Avalon. So we took off from Avalon, we had one half statue mile visibility, and uh, I think we were in the uh, 300s uh, for the Barrow. Sorry, we were in the 30, uh, 30 .00 plus area for the Barrow. Now, on takeoff, we took off from runway 22, so it is a climbing straight out. So we f straight ahead or runway heading, so that's pretty much what we attempted to do until we got to 2300. Once we were there, then we proceeded on course um, direct to Seal Beach. Once we were at Seal Beach, let me see if I have this stuff open. Um, once we got to Seal Beach here, we started the... There for him. Um, we started the approach once we got to the intercept of Seal Beach, so we pretty much just headed direct to Seal Beach, and then once we got direct to Seal Beach, we started their VOR approach, because it had lower minimums than their localizer. We'll take a quick look at that here um, before I brief you guys on the approach that we did actually fly. So, make sure that that's legit what I said earlier, because looking at this now, yeah. It's right here. Let's see, 537. We were doing a straight in for 25, so 537 for that one. And then this one over here is 557 or 620. So we had 20 feet lower minimums by doing a VOR instead of a localizer. So I chose the VOR because that should get us right around um, the minimums for the cloud bases, which were right at 600, this one would have kept us 20 feet inside of those clouds, and so the loc the, sorry, the VOR was a better choice. So let's take a full look at the VOR approach into Jacqueline. I want to call it Jacqueline Cochran, but that's over near Thermal, so we'll just call it Northrop Field or Hawthorne Municipal. Um, so we're doing the VOR runway 25 into KHHR or Hawthorne Municipal. You can see that we are running current charts. These are the current charts from the 4th of February until the 3rd of March 2016. We intercepted, or we started our approach from Seal Beach. We came in from Avalon, so we came in pretty much this direction. We intercepted Seal Beach. Obviously, um, we had a little bit of trouble intercepting it, but once we intercepted the course, uh, we were fine, and then we prepped ourselves uh, the outbound course, or the outbound radial of 341. So once we got to Seal Beach, we took the outbound 341 radial until we intercepted the 261 inbound from Los Angeles, which case we turned into it. Now, at um, Norwa, or however you want to pronounce that, we'll call it Norwa, we intercepted it at or above 2,700 on the first approach, and we flew that one all the way down minimums were here, we flew it probably to about here, and then at that point we declared we could see the field and then we lost the field, so we had to execute the missed approach, which was a climbing left-hand turn to 210 on a heading of through, um, whoops, which was a climbing left-hand turn to 210 and uh, climbing all the way up to 3000 to intercept the 170 radio. We did one kind of shaky hold, it probably actually looked like that in real life, um, at Limbo, and then we came back in and at about this point is when yours truly decided that we should do a DME arc. So then we started an arc. We centered here. Yeah, that's about right. Um, to get to belly, because I didn't feel like flying the rest of the approach over here. Now that was a poor choice. I shouldn't have done that, but I decided that it would be a good use of my time to save me the time of not having to fly the whole approach because it was late. So once again, that was a poor judgment call due to the time of day that I decided to record that, and we were at or above 1,900. Now, flying the approach a second time, let's uh, let's be smart here and change our colors. I'll just make it a little bit easier to see. 
Uh, we'll go for a nice blue. Uh, a sky blue, we'll call it, in the words of Bob Ross. So, we intercepted it here at this point. Now, our approach path was actually <coughs> was actually a lot shakier the time that we did it, the time we redid the approach after we took the missed approach. Um, also, our altitude wasn't wasn't quite kosher. It was very unstable. It wasn't linear like this line or like that line that I just drew. It was very shaky. Um, that was probably due to lack of focus because I was trying to figure out whether or not we'd make it and what the plan would be if we missed. So I wasn't entirely focused on the approach um, because I didn't have a good plan. <coughs> excuse me, after we went missed. So that's that's the problem. So what can I do to improve? That's some of the things I need to touch on here. What can I do to improve? I'll well, start off with number one, hopefully, which is um, focus on the approach. So when I was flying that approach, I just need to stay focused on it. I can't get distracted with what am I going to do after. Um, actually, before that, step zero is have a plan. I don't know why I started to write an F, but whatever, we'll, we'll roll with it. Have a plan after, after approach. So we'll write after. And that's the problem. I hadn't fully established a plan yet. And I think that's that's where I kind of made, made a whoops, made a giant mistake as far as the stability of the approach went. And then obviously two is um, assessing the situation after going this. So we'll put assess, oh, if I can spell correctly. Whoops, I was going to say, um, I don't know what I was going to say there, but that wasn't assess. Assess the situation. I think I was going to do some shorthand for it, and then I'm like, that's not quite, that's not quite kosher for, for YouTube. Um, assess the situation. And then three is to um, think of solutions in the event that we went missed. So on the first approach, if we, if we get ourselves into a little checklist checklist mode here, this was done. I knew as soon as I go missed, I would hold it limbo. I was able to focus on the approach. I was able to assess the situation and go missed. And then I was able to figure out a solution to the problem once we had done the full missed approach procedure. On the second time, I didn't do this, which meant it was hard for me to focus on this. Um, assessing the situation and the control inputs was kind of a meh. And then there is no solution to the problem anyway, so that really wasn't of concern. But I definitely should have focused on the approach. Um, I then decided to do this flight, or a different flight on Pilot Edge going from uh, Henderson, not Hen I keep wanting to call this place Henderson, going from Hawthorne, ooh, massive, massive line for free, um, going from Hawthorne, all the way over to, I believe I was headed over to Santa Monica. Uh, so that'll be the next one, and then there's another flight happening from Santa Monica to Riverside. And this one's this one's golden because this is my first interaction with 100%. Uh, what's it called? That was my first interaction with 100% turbulence creation by Active Sky Next, and so I realized why no one runs 100%. But it also makes me wonder why 100% would be so strong. But that's that's for the uh, for the debrief on the Santa Monica to Riverside leg or Flay Bob leg. So. For those of you guys who are keeping track and have any interest, this ooh, can't see terrible yellow anyway. This will be the first video to come out after after this one, and then this will be the second um, series. So this one will also have a debrief to it. So it'll be the video and the debrief. We'll call it VD, and this one will be the video and the debrief as well. So that's pretty much the game plan. This was the first time I did the debrief. Um, I f didn't fully um, debrief this section of the chart right here. Um, but that's something we can get into at a later date, and I didn't really debrief the vertical profile or the airport diagram. <clears throat> so, um, <coughs> hopefully on the next series uh, I'll get a little bit more in tune with how to do this, but this was just a rough, rough run around and a rough idea of what I wanted to accomplish or do with this. And so I think this is a valuable tool for me to be doing, and I hope that you guys find it helpful, and I will uh, catch you guys for the next series. Take it easy, and uh, 
Yeah, the debriefs will get better once I get more accustomed to doing them. It's simple to do them on the uh, on the Twitch stream. The hard part is to then explain it quickly with enough detail to not make it a 20-minute YouTube video. So uh, I'll leave you guys to it. Have a good one, and uh, catch you for the next one. Hope this was enjoyable. Like whatever, whatever maybe do whatever. You guys know this. I'm not going to beg for the for the popularity contest. See you guys in a bit.